Welcome back. So we're going to solve this problem using completing the square. All right, so step number one, actually the first step, the real step number one is to divide uh, all terms in the equation, both sides of the equation, by a if a is not one. But since a is one, we can skip that step. So step two, we're going to rewrite the equation so that the constant is alone on one side of the equation. All right, so that means, so we have right now, come on. Come on. There we go. We have x squared, I don't know why that box is there, plus 8x minus 4 equals 0. All right, so now we're going to add 4 to both sides to move the constant term. So that gives us x squared plus 8x is equal to 4. We're going to square, step number 2, we're going to square half the coefficient of x and add this value to both sides of the equation. So remember, that's just b divided by 2 squared. So our b, of course, is 8 right there, or right there, wherever you want to look at it. All right, so that's going to be equal to 8 divided by 2 squared, which is 4 squared, which is 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides of the equation. So long as we do it to both sides of the equation, right, our equation is still balanced. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to 4 plus 16. We're going to factor the resulting trinomial as a perfect square and combine the terms on the other side. We just, we're just going to add the 4 and the 16 on one side, and we're going to factor the x squared plus 8x plus 16. Well, these always follow a pattern. So there's two ways you can think of it. It gives you the same answer, um, whatever's easiest for you. It'll always be x plus or minus, and it's a plus if there's a plus, a positive, and it's minus if there's a negative. The c term is always going to be positive because we squared something, but that coefficient in front of um, x there could be positive or negative. So it's x plus or minus, then it's going to be b divided by 2. And there's going to be two of them, right? So it would be x plus or minus b divided by 2, x plus or minus b divided by 2, which is the same as x plus or minus b divided by 2 squared. Right? That's one way you can think of it. The other way you could think of it is x plus or minus the square root of c squared. Right? Because b divided by 2 is 4. Right? It says b was 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4. What c is, six, is 16? The square root of 16 is also 4. Right? So b divided by 2 is 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And the square root of c is the square root of 16, which is also 4. So whichever way you prefer to think of it uh, is fine with me. I usually think of b divided by 2 right, rather than square root of c. But if you like square root of c, it is the same thing. All right, so we're going to factor the resulting trinomial. So x squared plus 8x plus 16 is going to be x, oops, I have my plus. x plus 4 times x plus 4. Or x plus 4 squared. On the other side, 4 plus 16 is 20. So now we're going to use the square root property because we have a something squared equals a number. All right, so we take the square root of x plus 4 squared is equal to, don't forget, plus or minus. All right, because you have, we have to take plus or minus the square root on the constant side. Square and square root cancel for the x plus 4 squared. So now that's x plus 4. Square root of 20 simplifies. So let me just put it over here so you can see that. That's 4 times 5. 5 is a prime number. 4 is 2 times 2. 1, 2 comes out. 1, 2 goes away. All right, so we have plus or minus 2 square roots of 5. And now I just have to subtract 4 from both sides. I don't have room to write minus 4, right, but you can remember minus 4. x equals negative 4 plus or minus 2 square roots of 5. And remember, this is not negative 2 square roots of 5. Right? Or negative 6 square roots of 5 because only the 2 is multiplied by the square root of 5. It is negative 4 
plus 2 square roots of 5, negative 4 minus 2 square roots of 5. But you can leave it like that. You don't have to rewrite it. But there's our two solutions, and that's it. Now we've solved it. All right, so here we're going to force one side to be a perfect square by adding b divided by 2 squared. We can factor, and then we can use our square root property that, that we used in the last, the last uh, Nearpod lesson. All right, let's look at some more. All right, so we want to solve x squared minus 20x minus 4. We'll rewrite it so the constant term is alone. All right, our a is, all these problems in this Nearpod, and this podcast, they're all going to have a, uh, a value of equal to 1. So we're never dividing by a in this particular lesson. All right, so we're going to add 4 to both sides. So x squared minus 20x minus 4 equals 0. So we'll just add 4 to both sides. So we have x squared, look at my negative sign, looks so weird there, that looks better, minus 20x equals 4. All right, now we're going to add b divided by 2 squared, which is, our b is negative 20, right, coefficient in front of x, so that's going to be negative 20 divided by 2 squared, which is negative 10 squared, which is a 100. So we have x squared minus 20x plus 100 equals 4 plus 100. We have to add that 100 to both sides. We're going to factor the resulting trinomial, right? So it's going to be x, it's going to be a minus, right? Because that's a negative, and half of 20 is 10. So x minus 10 times x minus 10, or x minus 10 squared is equal to 104. So now we use our square root property. So we have the square root of x minus 10 squared equals plus or minus the square root of 104. Square and square root cancel, I have x minus 10. 104 does simplify. All right, so it's divisible by 4, right? Because 100 is, and we just added 4 more. All right, so that would go in twice into the 10. We'd have two leftovers. So that would be 26, All right? Uh, 4 is 2 times 2. 26 is 2 times 13, but there is only one pair of 2s. So the 26 is going to stay under the radical, even though it is not a prime number because it's just uh, 2 and 13. All right, so we have x minus 10 equals plus or minus 2 square roots of 13. And now all I have to do is add 10 to both sides. So x equals 10 plus or minus 2 square roots of 13 is our answer. Oops, what happened to our 13? See how easy this is? Easy, cheesy, lemon squeezy. All right? And if it's not, I'll explain it to you some more. I'll work with you, and then it'll be easy, cheesy, lemon squeezy. All right, so here I didn't. I wrote the steps all on one side. All right, and so here I, and I should have these steps in your notes. On, on, I don't know which, if this problem's in your notes. I don't have them in front of me. Um, well, actually, I do have them in front of me, but they're too far away for me to reach. Uh, but uh, whatever ones are in your notes, I have all the steps there that are on um, the right-hand side in your notes. All right, so we have x squared minus 9x minus 3. All right, a is 1, so we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to move the constant term to the other side. We're going to add the opposite to both sides. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. So that gives us x squared minus 9x equals 3. We're going to add b divided by 2 squared to both sides. All right, our b is negative 9. Don't make that a decimal, please. You'll have more trouble with it than it is worth. All right? Keep it as a fraction. It's a lot easier to square and take the square root of the fraction. All right, so negative, we're going to add a, and I'm going to write all the steps here. So x squared minus 9x, we're going to add a negative 9 divided by 2 squared to both sides. I like to write it like that so that I can remember, I can see exactly, and I don't have to write anything else. I know exactly what I'm adding and I don't make a mistake. All right. I don't make a careless error because I'm doing it in my head. x squared minus 9x plus, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna simplify 9 divided by 2. That doesn't reduce. So I'm just going to square both sides, or square both parts of the fraction. 
So negative 9 squared is 81, and 2 squared is 4. So 81 fourths is b divided by 2 squared. We just have to add it to both sides. So 3 plus negative 9 divided by 2 squared is going to be 81 fourths. On the left-hand side, we can factor. It's going to be x. It's going to be minus, because that's a minus, and b divided by 2. 9 divided by 2. Leave it like that. Don't make it 4.5. Leave it as 9 divided by 2 squared. All right, I'm not going to write uh, x minus 9 halves times x minus 9 halves. Did that on the other page. I think, I hope that you now have the idea that x minus 9 halves squared is just x minus 9 halves times x minus 9 halves. Equals, I need a common denominator so I can add those together. All right, so it, the denominator is 4. Right, that looks like a, a squiggle, but it's a 4. All right, so if I want this denominator to be 4, that means I'm going to have to multiply the numerator by 4, right? right? Because it was 3 over 1. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 3 times 4 is 12. So 12 fourths is the same as 3. Now I can add those together. So I have x minus 9 halves, all squared, equals. That's going to give us 93 fourths, which I can, instead of writing that as 1, uh, one radical. Quotient property for radicals says I can write it as 2. So the square root of 93 fourths is the same thing as the square root of 93 divided by the square root of 4. Those are the same. Right? Because multiplication is just the inverse, I mean division is just the inverse of multiplication, right? And we could split radicals um, into the, the product of the factors. We can split radicals into quotient of factors, too. All right, so now we can take a square root of both sides. So now we have the square root of x minus 9 halves squared. And oh, by the way, on the left hand, uh, right hand side there, I tell you to break the quotient under the radical into two radicals, and that's the quotient property. So we have the square root of x minus 9 halves squared equals plus or minus the square root of 93 divided by the square root of 4. Now you can see why I did that because one of those is a perfect square, and the other one is a prime number. And it's a little crowded over here. And a little crooked, I don't know if you noticed that. I'm going downhill. There, that looks so much better. All right, now let's simplify. Square and square root cancel. So this is gonna be an x minus nine halves equals all right, now we're going to simplify the radical. There's nothing we can do about the square root of 93. It is a prime. Oh, it's not a prime number. What am I saying? However, it doesn't really simplify. <laughs> so it's not a prime number. It's divisible by 3. Right? So 3 goes into 93 31 times. But 31 is prime and 3 is prime, and they're not the same prime number. So you're still not simplifying it, but it's not a prime number. Square root of 93, square root of 4 is a perfect square. That would be 2. Now all we need to do is isolate x, which means we're going to add 9 halves to both sides. So x equals 9 halves plus or minus the square root of 93 halves. And notice we have two solutions, right? We're always going to have two solutions when we're talking about a quadratic equation. Our two solutions are x equals 9 halves plus the square root of 93 halves, and we have x equals 9 halves minus the square root of 93 halves. Wanted to make sure that was clear to you that we have our two solutions there. Right? We just typically write it as plus or minus, um, so we don't have to write everything twice. All right, so now we have x squared plus 6x plus 34 equals 0. Same steps. We need to add the constant term, the opposite of the constant term to both sides, so we can move it. So we're going to add a negative 34. So we have x squared plus 6x. Whoops, got carried away. Equals negative 34. Now we're going to add b divided by 2 squared to both sides. So x squared plus 6x plus 6 divided by 2 
squared right, equals negative 34 plus 6 divided by 2 squared. All right, so that on, when we simplify the, the left hand side here, we have x squared plus 6x plus 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. I have that also on the, on the right hand side. And then we have negative 34 plus 9. Or we can factor, right? So x squared plus 6x plus 9, right, is going to be x plus, because that's plus there. And then half of 6 is 3 squared, right? So it'll always follow that pattern, right? So I have it over here. So it's going to be half of b is equal to negative 34 plus 9 is going to give us negative 25. All right, now we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we have x plus 3 squared, square root of x plus 3 squared equals, don't forget, plus or minus, square root of negative 25. Square and square root cancel, so I have an x plus 3 on one side equals plus or minus. The square root of negative 25 is 5i, all right? So if you take the square root of a negative number, you'll have an i in the solution, all right? So i is equal to the square root of negative 1. All right, now all I have to do is solve for x, which means I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Now I actually have room to write minus 3. So we have x equals negative 3 plus or minus 5i. You still can't add those together because the 5 is multiplied by i. Had that been an x plus or minus 5, you'd simplify that to 8 and negative 2. You can't combine a negative 3 and, oh, excuse me, if it was a plus or minus 5, that number's negative 3, we would have had a 2 or a negative 8. But since that's a 5i, and the negative 3 does not have an i, right, you can't combine them. They're not like terms. And we're done with this one. There's our answer, negative 3 plus or minus 5i. So one solution is negative 3 plus 5i. The other solution is negative 3 minus 5i. Here we have x squared minus 9x plus 25. Right? So we're going to move the constant term. We're going to add the opposite of c minus 25 from both sides. So we have x squared minus 9x equals negative 25. We'll add b divided by 2 squared. We had this one, same number before, 9 divided by 2. So we have x squared minus 9x plus negative 9 divided by 2 squared equals negative 25 plus negative 9 divided by 2 squared. Oh, we barely squeezed that in there. If we move everybody over just a tad. All right, so now let's simplify that. We have x squared minus 9x, there we are, plus uh, negative 9 squared is going to be 81, and 2 squared is going to be 4. Equals negative 25 plus 81 fourths. All right, on the left-hand side here, uh, we're going to have, we can factor that, and that's going to be x minus b divided by 2, so 9 divided by 2 squared, because there'd be two factors. This, this, this is a per we force this, right, to be a perfect square, right? So it's x minus 9 halves times x minus 9 halves, or x minus 9 halves squared. We need a common denominator there, right? So we need 4 as our common denominator, right? And so negative 25 is negative 104, excuse me, a negative 100 fourths. Right? And if you simplify that, right, it would be negative 25. So now let's combine the like terms on the right-hand side. So that's going to be negative 19 fourths. Come on. There we go. All right, so now we can solve by taking the square root of both sides. So we have the square root of x minus 9 halves squared equals, don't forget your plus or minus, and I'm going to split that right, into two radicals. We can do that, because they're exactly the same. All right, it's just easier on the simplifying. So square and square root are going to cancel. So we have x minus 9 halves. On the other side, we can simplify the, neg the square root of negative 19, 
right? Because that's equal to the square root of come on, negative 1 times the square root of 19, right? And we know the square root of negative 1 is i. And then the 19 has to be stuck in the radical. That is a prime number. And the square root of 4 is 2. Now all we have to do is add 9 halves to both sides. x equals 9 halves plus or minus i square roots of 19 over 2. All right? Sometimes somebody might combine that, by the way. See, there's the same denominator there. I am fine with that answer, right? Perfectly fine. But if this is a multiple choice question, this is the same as, since they both have a denominator of 2, as 9 plus or minus i square roots of 19 divided by 2. All right, so that's the same thing. I'm fine with the, the first answer, right? But if it's multiple choice, you should be able to recognize those are the exact same things. Do we have any more? That's it. So that's the end of this podcast. So you can do that whiteboard practice, right? Um, I will be posting that. Actually, it'll be posted by the time you see this podcast. And uh, you can then do those problems and practice yourself, right? So I hope you enjoyed this podcast and have learned a lot about completing the square, right? In the next podcast, we're going to look at completing the square where A is not 1, right? Bye for now.